You are now watching The Lone Blown. Blown! Yo, what's poppin' YouTube? You're here at The Lone Blown, and today we're gonna be going over a Darkness Ablaze deck profile, and that is, of course, of Senna Scorch VMAX. So whether or not you're playing in the Rebel Clash format standard on PTCGO, or if you're looking ahead like myself, you will be playing Darkness Ablaze at some point in the next month and a bit. I've already gone ahead, tested the format over the past month or so, really starting to enjoy it, and Senna Scorch is one of my favorite decks overall. The reason why I like this deck is because it has a lot of HP, it can build up energies quickly with Welder, I've had a lot of success with Welder or Fire type decks in general, and it reminds me a lot of Fire Toolbox, which I was able to come second place at the Oceania International Championships um, with. So becoming a finalist of the International Championships, of course I'm going to like a deck that is very similar. So let's go over the deck profile, explain it over a little bit, and hopefully you will find it helpful. So starting off, we got three copies of Senna Scorch V. So the way that V and V Max mechanics work, you need to evolve from a Senna Scorch V to evolve into a Senna Scorch V Max. Senna Scorch V, coming out in our Darkness of Blaze set, has an attack burning emissions for one fire energy. You can discard an energy from this Pokemon. If you do, choose one energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon and discard it. So you have an opportunity to take your opponent's energies out if necessary. Has another attack, Burning Train, 180 damage. I'm not entirely sure I haven't used that attack too much, but I could see it turn two if your opponent doesn't get anything set up. 210 HP, Water Weakness, three Retreat. Basically what you would expect from a Pokemon of this caliber. I really do like how it has Burning Emissions where you can discard an energy from the Pokemon. It gives you a lot of options. So if your opponent miss, doesn't attach properly on their first turn, or let's say they're playing like an Eternatus or an ADP Zacian, something that doesn't necessarily power up energies as easily as other decks, you could really punish them for that. And also up right here, we do have translations in the description. So if you are looking for something, if, if you don't necessarily hear it in the video, or if you're using it without audio, be sure to check out the, so, sub, sub, uh, the <laughs> description links. Blah. All right, moving on. We got Senna Scorch V Max. So this is what Senna Scorch V is going to evolve into, and this is really where the deck's core is starting with. Um, 320 HP evolves from Senna Scorch V Max. For Colorless, Colorless, it's doing 40 damage plus an additional 40 for each Fire Energy attached to this Pokemon. And at the end, you you may attach a Fire Energy from your discard pile, but that doesn't count towards the calculation of damage in this attack. So I think it's pretty cool that this Pokemon can do a lot of damage. So a Welder, just doing a natural Welder with this Pokemon, three energies on this Pokemon, you are doing 160 damage. You have 320 HP and you attach another energy. If this Pokemon stays afloat, it just keeps on rolling and rolling and rolling. Um, and that's not including like other ways that you have to power it up. Speaking of other ways that we have to power it up, we have Volcanion. When I was originally testing this deck, I had a Jirachi build, but I found myself not using Jirachi as often as you'd think. So I actually just switched this up into a Volcanion build. So you can Flare Starter, so this deck goes second, you try to get a Welder for his turn, however you want to attach it, likely to a Senna Scorch V, and then use Volcanion to power up it again. So you can actually get five energies on a Senna Scorch V, six energies total in play, and then next turn you're ready to knock out whatever you want with the Santa Scorch V Max. Doing those numbers with the five energies, you're doing 240 damage turn two with a Santa Scorch V. Um, if you're attaching an energy for your turn, you're doing 280 on your second turn. And if you're using Welder, you're doing up to 360 damage on your second turn. So it's kind of wilding out there. In order to make this deck a little bit more consistent, I do have two copies of Dedenne. The new uh, trainer kit Dedenne is pretty awesome there. So the way that we're using this card is so that we can just dead a change, discard our hand if necessary, um, and then just drawing cards. So this is really just a consistency crutch in the deck, similar to most other decks. We currently don't have a way to attack with either Static Shock or Tingly Return GX. Another card that I really like in this deck, and I really have been liking in Welder decks, is Eldegoss V. So there's another consistency crutch. We have Happy, uh, happy Match. So we could just grab a supporter back from our discard pile put it into our hands 
and be on our merry way we can also use float up if we want to use supporters again and again so we actually can attack with this pokemon something that you're probably not going to attack with but you can lift it out of play just use happy match again or to get a two prize card pokemon off your bench one of the new cards that we have here is crobat v so crobat v is coming out in darkness of blaze has an ability when you play this card down from your hand to your bench you may draw cards until you have six cards in your hands you can't use more than one knight assist ability per turn so basically you can't use crobat more than once per turn can't really attack with it but it's another consistency crutch so maybe we have some important pieces in our hand we don't necessarily want to discard them crobat v is going to be that middle ground between a dedene so i like that when you're searching through this deck you have an option for dedene gx or eldegoss v However, you really want it to work then we have a copy of heatran gx so heatran gx is going to allow us to acquire energies on the center scorch v v max and then we can move to active with the heatran so this pokemon is likely not getting knocked out you could swoop in with the heatran gx use hopper and gx for a lot of damage or turn one it gives you an opportunity to attack for 130 damage so if your opponent doesn't necessarily get a pokemon in play seems really good Another side note for the Volcanian is it can actually get through another upcoming strong deck, Decidueye's lock. So you could actually knock out Decidueye's with Volcanians as a non V, V Max, or GX Pokemon. Moving on to our trainer supporter stadiums, we got three copies of Giant Hearth. And Giant Hearth is just going to be a generally strong card in a fire type deck. We're searching out fire energies. This deck has relies off fire energies and attaching energies. Seems like a win-win. We got four copies of Welder. I'm sure y'all weren't expecting anything less from a deck like this. Welder, 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 Welder. This allows us to accelerate energies onto our Pokemon so that we can do more damage with Senescorch VMAX when we're using uh, GMAX Centiferno. We can draw more cards. I mean, Welder's been a tried and true card for a while now. I think a lot of players, if they've been playing Pokemon for a bit, they know what Welder does. If you don't, you soon will after trying this deck out. We also have two copies of Boss's Orders. So Boss's Orders is great here because we can bring up whatever we want. Um, this deck can kind of self-accelerate <clears throat> with the bonus effects of GMAX Centiferno. So if you don't necessarily need to use Welder to get a knockout, in a particular turn you could use boss orders to target the pokemon that you want we have four copies here of pokemon communication this is merely the best way that we have for vmax pokemon to be searched out in combination with other cards other ways that we could search it out would be like evolution incense um <clears throat> the one that i might want to try out is pokeball because this deck only has 15 pokemon based off my count so 3 6 10 15. It's running a little bit low for Pokemon communication, so there is a chance that I might switch this to Pokemon in the future. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of coin flips. Maybe I'll add an extra Pokemon so that we kind of have a better balance of Pokemon to energy ratio. If I were to add a Pokemon, I might add a Mewtwo. I'm just a little bit worried between Eldegoss and Mewtwo being counterproductive in the same deck. We have four copies of Quick Ball. Pretty much a staple in every single deck now. This is just a search out basic Pokemon. So whether we need to get a Senescorge V, if we have a Volcanion in the active Pokemon, or we need a Volcanion to switch into it, um, <clears throat> the Quick Ball seems like it's going to be able to search out what we want. We also might want to discard Fire Energies between Quick Ball or Giant Hearth to get energy in the discard pile for GMAX Senaferno. So that's another thing as well. Since this deck does not play <clears throat> Jirachi, I did add in four copies of Pokegear so we can make it a little bit more consistent I do think Pokegear is great with Welder decks in general. So just grabbing Welders or even maybe even a Boss Orders out of the deck can really be game altering. We have four copies of Switch. The reason why we have four copies of Switch is because we just want to get into the Volcanians so that we can use um, its attack to power up energies on the first turn. So we can get our Scent of Scorch VMAX rolling on, a, on the second turn or as early as possible. Also, um, we want to get out of those Volcanians after we're done with it. That's for the same reason that we have Scoop Up Net. A skateboard was one of the most popular cards that we had in our last formats, and it did sadly rotate from play. So we don't necessarily have 
access to moving our Pokemon to the, out of the bench, the active bench or the active to the bench. Scoop of Net allows us to bring the Volcanion back. This might be one of the reasons, though, why we do add in the Mewtwo. It's not necessarily the best card to have in the deck. It just gives us three extra spots that we can get out of the active with Switch. And we have two copies of Fire Crystal here. And that's just to get back Fire Energies after a Senna Scorch VMAX gets knocked out or anything similar to that. We also have um, 12 Fire Energies here. So the Fire Energies are great to just power things up, grabbing them with Giant Hearth, powering things up with Welder, you getting extra energies with GMAX, Sentiferno, or powering up energies with Volcanion. It's a fire type deck, it's gonna have fire type energies. You wanna have a lot of fire type energies so you can do more damage with GMAX and Deferno. It's just one of those things where you need a lot and you're gonna discard cards with the Dene. You might be able to get by with one less, I'm not entirely sure. 12 is just kind of the number that I've been playing around with. Maybe I'll wanna have, have another Giant Hearth or another Fire Crystal, but generally 15 is going to be an appropriate amount of energies. And lastly, we have three copies of Heat Fire Energy. Heat Fire Energy is coming out in Darkness Ablaze, and it reads the card that the card provides a fire energy while it's attached to a Pokemon. If it is attached to a fire Pokemon, they have 20 extra HP. So you can't well do this on, but you can give this Pokemon extra HP. So, like I said, the strategy of this deck, power things up with Volcanion onto a Senna Scorch V into a Senna Scorch VMAX using Welder and attacking with GMAX Sentiferno. You have Heatran to sweep things up. And if you find yourself against a Sol deck that's going, that's stopping your GX V and VMAX Pokemon from attacking, such as the upcoming Decidueye from Darkness Ablaze, Volcanion is a great way to attack against that. Cards that I'm not too sure of are Scoop Up Nets. It's really counterproductive and it's kind of a leftover from when I had Jirachi in here. So you might want to try Jirachi out. Other cards that might be cool would be Mallow and Mana, just to heal some damage. Other healing cards such as Potion, Hyper Potion. Um, I've also seen lists that play Wondrous Lab or Big Charm and they really focus on Senna Scorch V being a heavy hitter Pokemon, whereas I feel like this deck wants to take the first hit and really run with it. Only time will tell which will be the better version of the deck. So overall, this deck seems like Fire Toolbox to me. I really like it. If there was a regional championships in the Darkness of Blaze format tomorrow, this would be one of my top considerations. Hopefully you all like it. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Stay tuned for future in real life deck profiles, whether it's featuring Darkness of Blaze or anything cool. Stay tuned to the channel. Thank you so much for your support. Really hope that you enjoyed watching that video. I totally enjoyed making it. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like the video, share the video with everyone that you know, and subscribe to the channel as well. Totally appreciate all the support. We got a lot of cool things happening on the channel, so stay tuned for more. Be sure to check out the social links in the description. Thanks and have yourself a great one.